What's up guys, Hey King here bringing you uh, this week's and last week's reviews on Boku no Hero or My Hero Academia. Chapters, I believe, uh, 362, which I missed, and chapter 363, the recent one. So, we're going to be going through both of these. Uh, I've already read last week's chapter. Uh, technically, it wasn't last week, because yes, last week I think was like a break, actually, and then we had a one-week break. Uh, because of, uh, what is it? Is it, was it Golden Week? Is that what it was? Uh, but yeah, um, last week's chat, well, the, the last chat, the previous chapter, six, uh, 362, three, 362, ended with, well, as we're seeing here, it ended with uh, Sonny, uh, you know, going for a powerful attack, a blast, uh, and it not really doing any damage, unfortunately. I mean, this is all for one, technically Shigaraki slash all for one, and... Yeah, I mean, we from seeing from this panel, it's a great panel. Uh, he, he's going out of it, you know, he's going all out. He's trying to burn him up, but and he does. I think he succeeds in burning off the arms and the fingers, but it doesn't hurt the overall body. We do have Mario uh, or Lemelion coming in and going for a punch, and uh, we see the blast going out of the academy all the way out in towards the city. Uh, we see Nedgerine coming in, uh, and yeah. And yeah, we get this moment with uh, Shigaraki where he's like, think about it for a sec. Do you really think that would have been enough to kill All Might in his prime? How delusional can you be? And yeah, we see it didn't do anything. We see Bakugo stand up. He's already taken a lot of damage, but he's still standing up. He's still determined. Uh, and he's like, take good care of everyone. Uh, we still have a battle to win. Isn't that right, Izuku? At this point, Bakugo's face is damaged as hell. Like... Uh, and as we know from the end of this chapter, Bokugo ends up dead, essentially, which is a huge surprise, uh, because <laughs> who would have thought that Bokugo was going to die, especially before Izuku even got there, but uh, as we get this chapter, we see it set up and pretty much be a giant uh, build-up to his death, essentially, as we see Bokugo go in, try and attack Shigaraki with whatever energy or strength that he has left. Um, he dodges Shigaraki's attacks, surprisingly, which is a big shock to Lemelion and uh, Blue Genist. And he goes for Quirk Explosion, and we we learn, you know, I think this is Shigaraki going through all of this, uh, trying to determine how he's doing all of this with the concentration of his sweat, etc, etc. You know, looking for victory, he kept uh, acclimating spears inside those glands, which caused the spears to disperse throughout his body in search of an outlet. Uh, the detonations going off inside his body bring about increased speed. My entire body is throbbing, eating even through your body feels like it's going to fall apart and constantly improve, improving it by doing so. This is the path you've been walking all this time, isn't it? Tell me, Izuku, will I reach you someday? And uh, yeah, Bakugo just pushing himself to his limit. And, you know, Shigaraki at the same time, why am I so angry? Why am I losing my cool? And he sees something. He sees someone in that in a, in a little panel glimpse there, who may or may not be the second uh, vestige, if you will, or the second all for uh, one for all user, who we still haven't actually clearly seen yet. A lot of people do say he resembles Bakugo, and there might be some sort of time travel or element involved here. I don't. I don't personally think so, but uh, it's interesting. He's reminded of that specific person. And Shigaraki, you know, against some run-of-the-mill heroes who don't even possess all for one, uh, one for all, die now, he screams out. And, yeah, we get this weird panel where Bakugo sees one of the all for one for all users. And I don't know if it's the second he sees or if it's one of the others. He sees someone and he's like, oh, that's right. Well, you see, since we met each other like that and there was so much going on at the time, I couldn't find the right moment to ask you. I believe this is All Might, actually. Yeah, this is All Might. We think we realize that this is All Might's spirit or All Might's uh, one for all spirit that he's seeing, the vestige of that. And he takes out a card of All Might that he's had since a kid and he's like, but I've always wanted you to sign uh, this for me. Which is a very Coulson moment from uh, Marvel, by the way, with Coulson always going to Captain America, being the fanboy that is, you know, I want you to sign my uh, collectible cards and that. And he's got this card that he wanted him to sign. And we see we see uh, uh, Shigaraki attack Bokugo, you know, pieces of whatever weaponry he's still had on him just getting ripped apart, flinged apart, whilst at the same time you have Nedgerine and Sun Eater and Mirko come in and attack 
uh, tag uh, Shigaraki along with uh, um, uh, Lemelion coming up from the ground and dodging the attacks with the attacks going through him and Bakugo just getting waltzed just 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 going and Blue Genius coming in trying to catch him and failing miserably. Skies were clear until just moments ago. The cause of this phenomenon appears to be a sharp rise in temperature. It looks like it's going to rain. You're just react. You're just reenacting our battle from before. What made you think the result would be any different this time around? And we see that uh, whatever was going on, it seems Bakugo was raising his temperature and it's causing the weather changes. But uh. Yeah, at this point, it was all in vain uh, because we have Shigaraki standing there. You know, we've been preparing for this moment. The Demon Lord's body is now fully realized. Uh, or do you now get it? Do you get it now? Our story begins here. And we see, we cut to Bakugo's mom. Uh, and then we cut into Blue Genius, his heart. We're seeing all the characters that are there screaming in shock. Aozawa included. And we see Bakugo and yeah, he's he's on the ground. Looks like he's been punched in the chest, through the chest, and the card all covered in blood. The end of dreams. Yeah, Bakuko is dead. He is dead, uh, which is... It's not even a funny moment. It's a shock. It's a huge shock, and it's unexpected-like, but... Wow. Do I think he's actually dead? No, I don't. I think he's dead now. But I do think he's going to come back. I do think there's going to be a revival. Personally, I would be uh, clapping hands mainly for if Horikoshi did have the balls to actually keep Bakugo dead and maybe only bring him back as in some sort of spirit form in the final, in a very final battle to help out to defeat all for, all for one or Shigaraki. But officially, he's gone. He's done. He's not. He's not technically ever coming back. But. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he is going to come back to life. Uh, or Izu Izuka is going to reveal some sort of hidden power and he's going to save him. But uh, yeah, uh, on one hand, this is like, come on, we, we know where this is going to go. Like Izuka is going to come in, he's going to see his friend, uh, his bully, his rival, and he's going to get pissed, he's going to get angry, and things are going to develop from there. But uh, maybe this is going to push everyone else that's there now to you know, survive no matter what and get the uh, justice on all for one to avenge him. But uh, I, yeah, I don't think he's officially dead dead. But yeah, we cut to the next chapter. And by the way, guys, remember to like and subscribe, please. I think I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Like and subscribe. And yeah, moving on to chapter 363. Bakugo has fallen and we have Blue Genius there. And uh, he's, you know, he's remembering, you know, we're seeing this panel of Bakugo on the screen. I've made a pledge. I will achieve absolute victory every time. We're taking this 4 to 0. No casualties. The strong don't settle for anything less. And we see Monoma, I believe, is that how you say his name? And he's seeing all of this. His eyes are open and he's, you know, obviously they're trying to keep it moisture. But he's he's in total shock. This can't be real. You can't do this. He can't believe Even he can't believe it. No one can believe it. Bakugo is dead. You can't go and die like this. And yeah, he's... This chapter is just coming out and pretty much reinferring, yeah, Bakugo is dead. And in, at the same time, we have Shigaraki slash all for one right now. All of the, the hands, the arms, whatever that they just got rid of, it's just continuing to protrude. There is no stopping this guy. You know, Sun Eater's attack didn't do anything. It didn't do any damage on the main body at all. Bakugo's attack didn't do any damage at all. Like, he's just coming. And uh, Blue Genius, there's no pulse. His heart is ripped to shreds. Yeah, he got hit through the chest and he's gone. He's dead. Unless there's someone there who can... Fix intern, you know, internal injuries. Bakugo is done for, and uh, the chapter title: Protectors and Invaders. And uh, and Lemion coming in, and he's like, "I won't let Shigaraki lay a finger on anyone else until Midoriya gets here." God damn it! Uh, yeah, even he can't believe it. And then we got Shigaraki at the same time. You know, he's getting up. You know, uh, all for one. We can see. We can see. Like obviously, some of his face has been blasted. So it does seem that maybe, perhaps, at best. Uh, Bakugo did attack, you know, some sort of his attacks did achieve something, but he, you know, he's, he's still well for the most part. He's, for the most part, he's 99% bloody well. You know, this time he's gone for good, putting so much responsibility on the shoulders of a kid. You did this to him. How very disappointing, Eraser. And this can't be. You bloody, and you've got Mirko, you know, just upset. You've got an, an, an entry on the ground here, and then you've got uh, uh, Lemelion Lem Lem coming in, Blue Genius, like, he's... These guys just saw what happened and they're in disbelief. And we see Mirko going crazy. You know, um, who, you know, Shigaraki mocking them at the same time. Who wants to be turned into another welcome present for Izuku Midori? You know, you know, at this point, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to kill you all. Like, you know, more deaths, more deaths. So, 
you know, when as he, you know, Deku gets here, he can see your corpses on the ground, essentially. Like, uh, this guy is going for complete psychological devastation at this point. Uh, you know, just, just getting things ready so that when Deku gets there, he will be broken inside. Um, still not, no idea where he is. Still no idea what's going on or what he was meeting head on when he was flying. But yeah, things are not looking good. We get Mirko getting attacked and she's biting. She's ripping her arm off, trying to escape. Uh, you know, she's blaming herself now. We're cutting to that war arc, you know. We're flashing back to that moment where she had that opportunity when she saw Shigaraki still in the, you know, in the, in the beta tank, if you will. If I had just killed you then and there. If I had just been a little faster. None of this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, she's feeling guilty, like, she's, fe and right, you know, uh, you know, understandable, understandable, it's not her fault, though, it's not her fault, but this is the situation it's led to, and it's devastating, to say the least, so now Shigaraki's like, don't beat yourself up, Arumi, uh, Aru R Rami, Rami, uh, Uzagayama, is that her name, Rami, Ooh, cute name, at that time, there was, there was still a lot of pro heroes around, so, so it's not like you were the only one who dropped the ball. This camera, man, seriously, it's pissing me off now. <sighs> but then more and more heroes decided to desert, leaving you no choice but to put inexperienced kids on the front line. Given the situation, it's only natural for some of them to die. Oh, God, but you took the initiative and struck us with everything you had, but it just wasn't enough. You didn't have the numbers or the preparation, and at this point, we get this big... We cut to another battlefield, another battlefield that we thought was over and done with. We're cutting back to Shota and uh, Edan, and yeah, Dobby is fighting back. It's revealed that Dobby copied uh, Shota's move, and now he's burning everyone. He's burning everyone. we got some characters here who are getting burned and dying and melting uh, to ashes. you got burning, trying to keep everyone away. And yeah, all things all things considered, it looks like facing you first was for the best. Huh? I knew it. It's so much better in person. It's like I got a feel for it somehow. And uh, burning, shut up, on, run away. Just before you buried me in ice, I copied your move as a last ditch effect. Effort. It's a pretty decent copy, if I say so myself. Right, Showtime. We got that one hero that was wearing that a bandana with the horns on it, and he's burning him. He's killing him. And there's there's Darby in with the X across his chest, and he's burning up. And he's like he's just this burning zombie as corpse walking. And Omina San, yeah, Omina. I think that's I guess that's his name. Uh, Onima San, and he's yeah, Onima's he's dead. He's gone. He's dead. Um, but Darby just killed him. He's burned him. He's got more than raw firepower going for him. That's right. After all, Toya Hone is Kirk to such a high level all by himself. He's got an extraordinary battle sense backed up by mad obsession. And Darby calls out to Skeptic. And we see this Nomu. This Nomu that's got some sort of device, I guess, a listening device or radio on its on its neck or, or back of the head. And we hear Skeptic, I'm too busy right now for your daddy issues. Let me guess, you're looking for Endeavor. He's currently at the remains of Gungun Mountain Villa facing off against All for One. Uh, you mustn't give us villains time to muster our forces. Midoriya made the right call by rushing in and trying to take the fight to us. And that's Shigaraki saying this. And now we cut into the satellite in the air. We're cutting the skeptic. And he, you know, he's, yeah, he's mobilizing the forces. Like, he's hacking the systems. He's causing uh, damage for the heroes. And, and this is the point where the villains are now counter-attacking. We thought things were going well. We thought things were going right. And at this point, a lot of us assumed things were going a bit too easy. Things were progressing too fast. But now we get this point, and we get to the point of this final fight. And yeah, we realize it wasn't as easy, easy as we thought it was going to be. Darby is not stopped. He's just killed two heroes, maybe more. And he's going off to Shota, possibly trying to go off to Endeavor. We got Skeptic hacking the systems. And yeah, even though he never had any real chance of success, did you think you could just cut me out of the company? Why am I not surprised that these numbskulls keep making stupid decisions? I built this network from scratch. Regaining control is child's play for me. You know, what were you trying to accomplish running off to another country while leaving all the talent behind? Due to your excessive conservatism, you've become a clay door and came more thinking for yourself. But I'm different. I will support Shigaraki Tomura. We'll achieve Redestral's dream. That's right. We'll create a world where no one is discriminated against because of quirks. That's the only real way to seize power. And we see the systems. We see the systems at the Academy, at um, my, my Hero Academy, getting hacked, um, you know, and bring about true freedom. A society without heroes or villains. 
what's the deal with all these errors? Someone is trying to hack into the system. And yeah, at this point, you have to wonder, what does this mean for the systems? Does this mean the academy is going to get hacked to the point where it's going to collapse onto the ground below, perhaps? What does this mean? Uh, chaos. That's what it means. Utter destruction, chaos. All for one. You can do as you please, for I will do the same. Not even the slightest trace of the old ways shall remain of the revolution. Especially those who admire and cling to the worlds of the old generations. There shall be no place for them in the new world. And we're cutting to the citizens. We're cutting to the various people that are trying to be protected. Uh, we're cutting to the various families. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing Endovar's family. He's, you know, his uh, uh, daughter, his, uh, his son, uh, uh, the, the mother, I'm assuming, uh, some of the other kids. There's no way Todoroki, Bakugo, and the others are going to lose this battle. And then we've got the spies. We've got awful one spies there with the rest of the citizens that they're trying to protect. And they've got their mobile phones on and they're talking and they're giving information, giving their locations, etc., etc. Everything is just going to shit and we're cutting back to the mountain and we get the biggest surprise at this point it shouldn't even be a surprise we saw what was happening the last time we were here we saw all for one regenerating and now we get to the final panel of this chapter and we see it lo and behold all for one regenerated and still regenerating his face having completely healed the hair back the eyes and ears the nose the mouth the structure the face the skin whatever he had lost it's all regained here in this very moment gongan mountain village remains apparently we were too desperate defending ourselves in the previous battle and didn't really manage to accomplish anything and we got we got yeah we, we see end of our on the ground in the air along with someone else i guess hawks but this time it's different Oh, for one. Yeah, even Hawk saying it, calling out his name, and that's what's happened. Heroes are the protectors, and villains the invaders. So we'll keep moving forward until our dreams come true. And yeah, all for one, officially regenerated to full power. Villains on the offensive. So yeah, this is an unexpected development. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people possibly predicted this. Uh, you, know, you know, going with the assumption that the villains would counterattack, but to such an extent and so soon after, after we had just gotten the heroes doing their own form of counterattack after all the planning. But I guess that's the point, isn't it? When you, when you get a story like this, where we see the heroes doing their plans the plan usually falls apart. Whenever we're told the plan, it eventually goes sideways. And in this case, it's gone sideways immensely. It went sideways from the very start when Deku was taken by Toga. You know, we assumed it was just pointless, but it wasn't. It wasn't pointless at all. Uh, Bakugo is dead. He's officially, at this point in time, he is dead. Dobby burning the entire area around a communal ward ar around and, and, and going for Shoto and all for one regenerated the full power using a, a quirk from Enri, a bullet quirk with a, a Pacific a bullet, a quirk bullet made, you know, to, to regenerate him of all things, I believe. Like, who saw this coming? No one saw this coming. It's unexpected and it's insane and it's crazy. And we don't know where everyone else, you know, we don't know what everyone else's situation is at this point. Things have gotten terribly, terribly bad very fast. Like, holy crap. Like, holy crap. And uh, it's it's a great, honestly, in my opinion, it's a great bloody chapter. Like, to end things on like this. To get the, uh, the tension and the angst going even further. You know, we went into this final arc and it was like, okay, it's fast paced. Things are going a bit too easy. This is kind of boring. Personally, I didn't find it like that. But this is exciting because now it's like, oh, things aren't just going to be as easy, uh, easy as we thought we would. We thought it was going to be. You know, Dobby isn't just going to go out like that. No, he's countering attacking. You know, Shigaraki counter attacking. All for one counter attacking. What does this mean for the other villains? Like, what are they doing? Deku is still in the middle of the sea. Like, what's up with that? And this brings me to another point where I'm hoping this means that we are going to see a lot of heroes and characters and past villains return to help turn the tide. Now, like my. My hope is that we see La Brava now come in and use her hacking skills to counter Skeptic's attacking skills because at this point it's set up now. You've got Skeptic doing his thing. Who's good enough to counter him, right? In the same skill set, uh, 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 you know, gentle criminal coming in, helping out possibly, you know, possibly, I don't know how, I don't know who he would aid, but uh, with Darby going crazy in Kamino Ward, you know, I'm assu I assumed it would be Stain coming in, maybe fighting a uh, Spinner, but at this point it feels like maybe Stain's gonna come in 
and be the one to fight Dobby instead and actually aid, you know, uh, Ida now, you know, this is, you know, Ida getting his sort of development, his sort of closure with Stain and, and Stain seeing Ida become this hero that he wasn't there before when he saw him and now it's like, okay, now you've become a hero that I can respect and I'm going to protect and help you and everyone else to stop Dobby now. Uh, what are the heroes? The heroes from the other schools, perhaps. You know, the tornado do. Like, where is he? Like, I want to see these guys come in. With the situation that we have now occurring, this isn't going to be something that's just going to end straight away very quickly. Now, things have, things have gotten to a point where it's like, they need backup. They need help. They need aid. Like, things are dire. Like, all for one right now has just regenerated. What does this mean? Like, what does this mean for other characters? What does this mean for other heroes? Like, can All Might regenerate possibly and come into the fight? Like, can Henry, like, do something where it's like, I can regenerate you, but it'll only last like like a few minutes or an hour, and All Might's gonna go in and be like, okay, like, this is the only thing I, I got left to do. Like, what, what's All Might's role in this? Like, is he gonna play a big part? And I'm assuming he will. Like, I don't think they would just leave it like that because who is, who is gonna, because Endeavor, I think at this point, is done. Like, he's barely holding on. Like, who's gonna, who's gonna stop All Might? He can't do it. He can't. He can't. He's tried and he failed. So someone else needs to take the reins of stopping uh, All For One now, like, uh, because Shigaraki is obviously going to be taken on by Deku when he gets there. Unless there's some sort of twist and he ends up facing All For One instead, but I don't see that happening. I see him facing Shigaraki. And so therefore, that means that someone else has to face this regenerator All For One. And the only one that makes sense is All Might. And it only makes sense if he regenerates as well to at least some form of his full power so he can come in and turn the tide and save the day. But... At this point, things are just hectic and insane. Like, who expected this? Who? I didn't expect this. And uh, yeah, I'm just gobsmacked. And it, it's just making me hot, hyped for the next chapter now. Like, it's making me hyped to see the anime now come back as well, especially. But yeah, this is just like, this is on point. This is on point. Hirogashi is on point and I'm loving it. Uh, I'm just hoping this means what it means with help coming in now. But yeah. That's my review for these two chapters, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, as always, remember to like and subscribe. Please do that. Share. Click the notification. And yeah, guys, I shall see you when I shall see you. I might, I might do this. I might do. I might keep this. I might make this a thing where I do this like every two weeks instead now. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, guys, great chapter. Anyway, take care and bye. Take care and bye.